So in this video, I thought I'd share how I'm using Tana, Spaced Repetition, AI, and the new Tana published pages um, to learn Latin. So I've been learning Latin for a few months. Um, I kind of got into it through first modern Greek and then ancient Greek. And um, I've been working with um, the book that's kind of recommended for all self-learners. Um, it's very popular on the internet. It's called Lingua Latina Per Se Illustrata or Lipsy, if you're on Reddit. And uh, it's focused on really intense reading. So rather than focusing too much on, on memorizing vocabulary and doing grammar, it's just a lot of texts that are incredibly carefully built up to kind of build on each other uh, in terms of vocabulary. And um, they're trying to provide as little uh, hints as possible and to make them so ideally as much as possible in the target language. So you see here there are some uh, words in the sidebar. Many of them have only grammar notes. Sometimes they're explained in Latin. And then here there's a few that have images and, uh, and diagrams and stuff. So it's really trying to keep you thinking in Latin the whole time. And it works pretty well. I've read through the whole book now of several hundred pages of Latin texts, um, and it's been amazing. However, I still feel kind of shaky on a lot of the words, and it's a huge amount of vocabulary, and some of it you don't get to revisit that often. So before I kind of move on to the next book, I kind of wanted to um, solidify a bit my, my vocabulary knowledge. And that seems like a perfect thing for spaced repetition. Um, however, I've learned, I've tried spaced repetition a few times in the past, and my two kind of beliefs or uh, axioms about spaced repetition, uh, the first is you should only use it for things you already know. So spaced repetition is not a way of learning something, it's a way of remembering something you already learned. Um, and secondly, the best way, like if you don't remember something, um, always add more detail. So in other words, what I don't want to do is to download, I'm sure there probably is an Anki deck somewhere for Lipsy because it's so popular. And then I would get a word like Uxor and I would be like, I don't remember that. And I'd flip and it said wife. And then maybe I said like, okay, Uxor wife, Uxor wife, Uxor wife. And the next day I would see Uxor and I would say, oh, I don't remember that. And that would just be a really frustrating experience. So instead we're going to use Tana. And um, to get these, first of all, into Tana, um, I found this PDF that had, helpfully, the whole vocabulary. This is 40 pages. It's a lot of words to learn. Um, it's in an incredibly bad format that makes it almost impossible uh, to copy meaningfully because it's just two columns next to each other. Um, so in the end, I just decided to type in the words that I'm not 100% sure about which takes a bit of time, but I thought that's actually a really helpful first step of the learning process. And so I basically have a heading here in Tana, uh, Latin vocabulary, and I have a tag called Latin word, and I put that as a default child tag. So what that means is anytime I add a new node here, like Uxor, I, it automatically gets that Latin word. And if I say uh, uh, Domus, you see it also gets that, that tag. So it's very quick actually to, to add these new items. And here I have a bunch of items. And in fact, many of these I kind of know, but I feel like maybe I'll forget them in a few weeks. Um, so I still put them in. Now, you see here a bunch of buttons. These are coming from the tag definition. Uh, the one, two, three, four is for the spaced repetition. So I made the Latin word tag inherit or extend my uh, spaced repetition tag, which I have another video about. And then I have a bunch of AI fields here. Uh, so if we look at uh, Basium, which I do remember right now, but I can't guarantee that I would in, in two weeks or a month, um, I've run the English translation on all of these. So that's the only one, because I want to see, I want to kind of control which of the other ones I run. Uh, so I've set up a bunch of AI fields, and we can see the uh, prompt just by command clicking here, as you can see. So for example, explain in Latin, here is the prompt that I provide. Um, and you have to experiment a little bit with these prompts to get uh, the stuff that you want. And so we can see here, if I click all, it'll just run all of the AI fields. Um, now, I know that relying on GPT is not, it's definitely not perfect. Um, sometimes it'll make mistakes. 
it seems to be pretty good at Latin from, from my uneducated kind of um, understanding. And I think it mostly works um, really well. Uh, it's usually pretty quick. I'm not sure why it's taking so much time here. Uh, let's try another one just for fun. There we go. Yeah, so some, usually it's, it's much faster, but I guess maybe a lot of people were using AI at that point. So here we have KISS, right? So we have, uh, yeah, this etymology is not very interesting. Um, I love these example sentences because I'm asking it to use very simple language and mostly I can actually read all of them. So it's providing me a ton of reading practice. Um, and uh, so here, Marcus, uh, gave me a kiss and here I explained to it that I wanted to indent the notes in a specific way that actually works with Tana so that I can expand the English without having to see it right away. Your kiss is sweet. Um, the boy gave his mother a kiss before sleeping. The boys, ah, Pueri. See, I'm practicing. Uh, give me a kiss on my forehead. I like a kiss. Well, on me, he placket, yes. Uh, a kiss is a sign of love. Perfect. Yeah, so, osculum, I've heard that. Now, here's a, here's a new thing that's really cool. Um, so, labia here, I'm pretty sure is lips, right? But let's say I wanted to add that to, um, as a word that I want to practice. What I can actually do is I can just select it, and I can hit the hash. And it says, okay, do you want to make this into a node and tag it? And I'll say, yep. And now you'll see it's, it looks kind of like this, but if I shift click it, you'll see that there's a new Latin word called labia um, that will come up in the search. So I can kind of, as I'm going down, I can keep adding things. So this one, I think I remember it quite well. So I'm going to say it's easy. And what you don't see in the background here, the SRS field is going to... And now it seems like everything on my computer is slow because this should also be super fast. But yeah, it now gave me the next uh, repeat date. So this is going to be on 11th of November. So in my spaced repetition system, it's going to pop up on that day. And if I still say it's easy, then it's going to maybe go a month out or so on. There's a there's an algorithm for how this is calculated. So yeah, uh, I can go down and kind of work my way through this list. And part of the idea was having this so that I could you know, as I'm working, if I need five minutes to a break or I'm waiting for something to compile, I can go in here and I can just work through a few of these. Um, now, the last thing that is pretty cool is that we've just released a way of publishing. And Tonnets doesn't yet have a fully fledged mobile app. Um, we are working on something there. Um, but in the meantime, we can actually use publish to put these on a web page that I can look at it on my phone. So if I just go to my uh, today page and what I can do is I can start. So here you see, these are the, there's uh, quite a few here um, that are scheduled for, um, for um, space repetition today um, because I basically, all the ones I didn't remember, I just said repeat. So I'll get, them, get to see them once more today. So if we actually want to practice those on our phone, um, what I can do is I can create a search node and I can say I want to find Latin words and I want the SRS field to match the parent date. So here's a nice list. And then we can, so I can say um, Latin words to practice. And then there's different ways in which we can display these. Because now if I do publish, we get a nice preview and we see that this is the default view and it's quite nice. Um, Right. Um, we could experiment with a table, and here we can hide some fields that we don't. We can hide, for example, this one. The SRS certainly we don't want. Um, so this could work, but my phone's pretty um, pretty small, so I don't think it would look good on my phone. On a laptop, it would look nice. We can also view it as a cards view, and. That's interesting how that looks. So, let's go 
Yeah, so you can kind of choose which fields you want to display. So this one actually is really nice. I'll have to check how it looks on my phone too. Um, but this might be a nice one. Um, and now I can just publish this. And boom, we have this really cool little cards view um, that we can, uh, should, should look nice in different resolutions, right? So it's kind of, yeah. And this one I can just then send to my phone and I can kind of scroll through these while I'm in a line in the store or something. And then I'll come back and I'll do these and I'll mark them as I know them because I've learned them. So yeah, this is, uh, this is something I'm trying out, but I think it's kind of cool how we can put all of these different functionalities together to um, do something really neat and to use the most cutting edge technology for learning one of the oldest languages.